morning when the Prime Minister asked him for $24 million for an application that was supposed to cost $80,000. Mm. And the bloc leader, he said, yes, absolutely, no matter the cost, we will vote in favour of it for millions. And the government house leader of the Bloc Québécois, in fact, said it's not the Bloc Québécois' job to scrutinize all government spending. We support yeah, the government is. and we tell them to go ahead. So what is the Bloc even good for? Oh, Piers Pickett fights with everybody! The Prime Minister is rising to answer the question, but I would like to remind members that it's important that questions during question period relate to the administration of government or committee business. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Bloc is part of the government, though. The leader of the Conservative Party oh. asked me what the Bloc is good for. I find that that question is hurtful to Quebecers. <laughs> Even if I'm I may disagree on with the Quebecois and their desire to constantly pick fights, Are you the kidding Bloc me? Québécois was elected by Quebecers. Those Bloc Québécois members of Parliament sit in this House and they do their jobs. The party across the way disrespects Quebecers. They disrespect mayors in Quebec. On this side of the House, we have work to do and we're doing it. <laughs> he's, he's offended on their behalf. Oh, Pierre's going to drop a bomb right now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, this is really something. There is a marriage here in this House of the Liberals and the Bloc Party. The Prime Minister compliments the Bloc, the Bloc applauds. Then the, the Bloc votes to support more money for our ARRIVE scam. The Bloc votes to drastically increase taxes along with this prime minister. The bloc votes for these housing policies that have doubled the cost of housing for Quebecers. The bloc is constantly voting with the prime minister to release dangerous criminals on parole. This liberal bloc marriage. Oh what's it my doing? God. What's it for? Pierre is going after everybody then. The right Don't be used minister. in the chat for Pierre. Mr. Speaker. He don't it's give very up. clear. Oh. Once again that the conservative party disrespects Quebecers. Not only do they disrespect nah, Quebecers, they're not but they disrespecting also disrespect Quebecers. Democracy. He's disrespecting the Bloc Mr. Speaker, Québécois. I've spent my entire political career fighting for federalism in Quebec and fighting for a united Quebec. Often that has involved being against the Bloc Québécois, but I have always respected Bloc Québécois members. I respect anyone who is a, a who runs to represent uh, constituents and who represents them here. The Conservatives' disregard for democracy and for Quebecers should be of concern to all Quebecers and to all Canadians. Have to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I just keep asking the same question, and it's the same question that the Premier of Quebec asked. François Legault asked this question. He asked, what does it do to vote bloc? Well, we know what it does. We know what it's good for. It's good for the Prime Minister. The Bloc mm -hmm. Québécois votes with the Prime Minister. They voted with him to drastically increase taxes on carbon and diesel. They voted with the Prime Minister to ban hunting rifles in the regions of Quebec. The Bloc is voting to release criminals and increase waves of crime on our streets. So when you vote Bloc, what you're really doing is supporting the Prime Minister. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Once again, what I hear is contempt, disrespect and contempt for Quebecers Craving and for democracy. Chaos. What I didn't hear, though, was a question. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. He's not worth the cost of all the products. He increased an energy tax with the support of the Bloc. He has increased taxes on paychecks, once again, with Bloc support. He has increased inflationary spending, always with the support of the Bloc. The Bloc votes for all of his discretionary spending. Now, the Prime Minister wants to hike taxes on beer, on wine, and on all other types of alcohol. He wants to hike these taxes on these products on April 1st. You know, after all these Prime Minister's taxes, what Canadians need is a drink. Will he cancel these taxes? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's very apparent yet again that the leader of the Conservative Party is looking to pick fights. We are here to invest to help vulnerable Canadians through dental care, through daycare spots. We are here to invest in seniors as well, to protect their pensions. 
He, though, wants to attack and cut pensions. We are here to help Canadians across the line. We will always be here to protect the most vulnerable. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. Meanwhile, the NDP Liberal Prime Minister has raised taxes on gas, heat and groceries, raised taxes on paychecks, raised income taxes on middle class and lower income Canadians, raised taxes on small businesses. He keeps raising taxes. It's enough to drive a man to drink. But he wants to tax that too. On April 1st, a Another 5% increase on beer, wine and spirits that will kill jobs for those workers and raise costs on consumers. Will he have the humanity to let someone have a drink in peace? Sorry, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while the Conservative leader continues to figure out uh, catchy slogans and buzzwords, we're rolling up our sleeves to deliver for Canadians more housing, dental care, supports for seniors, uh, supports for young families, fighting against climate change while putting more money in their pockets. Uh, we are doing the hard work of delivering for Canadians while he proposes nothing but cuts to programs, austerity and catchy slogans. Mr. Speaker, uh, we need continued responsible approach to government and that's exactly what we are delivering. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Bro. After reports that the RCMP had to intervene at the Winnipeg labs due to a security breach and great speculation, public speculation of espionage by a foreign dictatorship at that Canadian lab, the Prime Minister fought tooth and nail for any of the documents to come out, including by de defying a motion of this House. We found out from a letter written by all parties that had seen the documents, including a Liberal MP, that this was to cover up embarrassment, not protect national security. What did the Prime Minister have to hide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Your ministers will be tabling the process, resu the uh, documents resulting from this process after question period. But I will note, Mr. Speaker, in this uh, question period, uh, following the two-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the leader of the opposition had nothing to say about this war raging in Ukraine, nothing to say to Ukrainian Canadians. Uh, as Canada signed security assurances guaranteeing Ukraine support to Ukraine for the next 10 years, he demonstrates once again he is non-committal in his support towards Ukraine, in his support towards Ukrainians. Mr. Speaker, it's shameful the Leader of the Opposition won't talk about it.